What is going on guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different, normally I focus on guides and stuff like that, but this is going to be more of a discussion type video. I've been playing Smite since the beta, uh, which is quite a while ago, and I'd like to talk about some of the larger issues that are affecting Smite at the moment. Uh, these are things that I think are not only deterring new players, but are also forcing many older players to leave, and then for people like myself that choose to stay with the game and keep playing, it's just really, really annoying to have these issues. So this is not a hate video at hi uh, I love Smite for the most part, I think hi is a great company. Um, I wouldn't be spending the time making this video if I didn't want to see things improve, and that's why I'll be suggesting fixes as far as I'm able to. Obviously some things I don't know why they're happening, so I can't really suggest fixes for them. The first issue is the servers. Now people are constantly DCing from games, this obviously affects ranked a lot, which I'll get onto in a minute because that's another issue. Uh, but it makes the game really no fun to play. You don't really get better by playing 5 versus 4, and it's annoying to suffer a loss if you're 4 versus 5. Uh, in many cases, there are multiple DCs on each team. Um, that can be something that happens, and it's really, really, really frustrating when basically everyone DCs from the game and the servers just go out. It's really frustrating. Now, these issues seem to come in waves, generally after a patch. Uh, that's very strange, but the only thing that really comes to mind with that is the fact that there's a spike in player activity, you know, more people are playing immediately after a patch and the servers can't handle with the volume of players and therefore there are loads of connectivity issues. Um, but who knows what the issue is there, whatever it is, it needs to be fixed. Uh, obviously there are connectivity issues with all servers at some point, um, sometimes they just go down, uh, sometimes there are just general issues that some players in some locations have slightly higher ping than other players in other locations. Uh, that happens in every game, CSGO, whatever it is you play. However, DCs in game and lobby on a frequent basis is not acceptable, um, and it does really need to be fixed if we want the game to actually grow and do well, because a game which has the uptime of a dead potato is really no fun to play whatsoever. Second issue is ranked. The TP system is the main issue here, and I think that if it were fixed, it would actually make some of the other issues that I'm going to talk about less of a problem. Firstly, I don't appreciate losing TP and getting deserters because the servers kicked me out of the lobby. I understand if I tab out and forget to pick a god, which has happened before, but what I suggest is waiting for a player to reconnect to the lobby uh, for 30 seconds, providing they've completely gone offline, um, so that there's a possibility that it wasn't their fault they disconnected. Um, but when it happened to me, I was able to re-log in instantly, so the lobby waiting for 30 seconds would have saved me, but if the person obviously doesn't reconnect, then obviously take away uh, the TP and give them deserters, fine, but there should be a little bit of a sort of a safeguard, um, especially considering that the servers are so bad at the moment. Secondly, if someone on my team disconnects for a significant amount of time, then significantly reduce the amount of TP that I lose. The same goes for if someone on my team feeds their brains out, aka they have high deaths, low kills, low assists, low damage, uh, just low stats compared to the rest of the team. Um, obviously, if the entire team does badly, then that's no particular player's fault. Obviously, the team loses TP, but if it's one person doing well and then the entire team feeds, that one person doing well shouldn't have to suffer as much and shouldn't lose as much TP. This gameplay I'm showing you, I think I did quite well. I went like 15 and 7, which isn't great as how Quan, because he's quite, he, like, he's basically overpowered, uh, depending on how you look at it. He can be countered, but in terms of ranked and that level of play, he is overpowered. Um, we had a DC, and Apollo didn't do very well. I still partially blame myself, because I made a misplay in the final team fight, and I think I could have carried us and uh, led us to win, but I didn't, so yeah. But anyway, I think I should have lost maybe like 3 to 5 TP rather than 10, which was the amount that I lost. It really sucked for me to play reasonably well and uh, lose 10 TP just because of a DC and someone and then someone else not playing very well. Um, that's very frustrating, especially because DCs happen quite frequently. Um, if high res adjusted the TP lost, depending on teammates feeding and trolling and stuff like that, and also against... Um, if players disconnect for a significant amount of time, then it would be sort of a safeguard against the servers being bad. Obviously, it wouldn't fix the servers, but it would sort of counter the server issues and also sort of deal with people feeding and trolling and stuff like that. But it would also counter the other significant issue in Ranked, which is BM. Now, some people BM because they're genuine dickheads and they'll BM you no matter 
how sorry you are that you're having a bad game. Everyone BMs at some point. Um, I BM a bit more than I probably should, but it's almost always that people who are full on feeding and pushing up the lane with no wards when they're five levels behind and stuff like that. If I call someone out on something and then they say, yeah, sorry, I fucked up, and if it's just like once or twice a game or whatever, then I say no problem and we're good. It's like, it's also happened to me. Someone calls me out on something. If I genuinely did something wrong, then I apologize and we move on. But those people that don't just BM for the sakes of it, like, they sometimes get super pissed off anyway because they're playing well and they're going to lose because of feeders. This may or may not be the person who's feeding's fault. They might just be having a bad game, but it's still insanely frustrating for the player that's doing well. Uh, so if TP was adjusted based upon that, then players doing well wouldn't be as annoyed because they're not going to lose as much anyway and there wouldn't be as much BM. Balancing is another thing that people like to complain a lot about in Smite, although I don't think that it's anywhere near as bad as people think. We've recently had a run of issues with Raijin Ratatoska, even though I like the rework, uh, despite the fact that he's OP. Uh, obviously, once he's balanced, I think he'll be really, really fun to play. Uh, Susano, of course, has issues, and then throwing Dagger being the only viable start for ADCs. The main issue here was not the balancing, in my opinion, but more the fact that Hyros takes so long to make the changes. There's a clear lack of playtesting done. Um, the PTS provides this, but Hyros react quite slowly to the feedback, and in the case of Susana, they just didn't listen for a long time. Fortunately, they finally listened, and the next patch will provide the necessary nerfs. However, it would have been nicer if they listened to the community weeks ago, because a lot of people are unhappy with the current state of Susano. Now, there's a lot of. There's also the sense that the patches are rushed and there's poor testing going on uh, in the software development process. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know how high res operates behind the scenes and I've never seen their code base uh, for Smite, but I think I speak for most of the community when I say we wouldn't mind waiting longer for patches if they were of higher quality when they came out. Also, spend longer in the PTS and get things balanced before the live release. Advertise the PTS when it's up on the home screen, so people can go and download it. I would guarantee you that most of the really, really casual players don't know what the PTS is, and if they did, I'm sure they'd go and play it, and we'd get a lot more feedback a lot quicker, and be able to really, really get things balanced before live release, because it would allow hires to get all of their data and stuff a lot quicker, and there'd be more people to give feedback. Um, now, there are also a few bugs in the game. Now, one major bug that should have been caught in unit tests, in my opinion, uh, is the enter button glitch. Now, this is an insanely inconsistent bug which causes the entire button to not work when typing messages. Uh, it's never happened to me in-game, and happens with varying frequency in the lobbies. Sometimes it lasts a second, sometimes several seconds. Now, Hyres have said that they don't know what causes it, but I do know that it hasn't always been there and it should have been picked up by unit test run on the patch that introduced it, whether this is uh, that it should have been picked up by the unit tests that they automatically run um, after they make changes to the code base, or whether it's something that happened in the PTS and people were like, hang on a second, the enter button doesn't work sometimes. Uh, so they're like, right, hold on, we need to go back and do some more in-depth testing on the code that we've added or changed to see what caused that. But it definitely shouldn't have got into the live build, and it definitely shouldn't still be happening now. Um, but anyway, that's all that came to mind when making this video. If you can think of any other issues or have any opinions on the ones that I have discussed, then please leave them down in the comments, and maybe I'll make a follow-up video on this. Like if you liked the video. If you didn't, then let me know one in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.